Hi, welcome to the Restoration Women's Virtues. I'm Pastor Mary Jean Pigeon, and this is the week of Thanksgiving. And it's a wonderful time to uh, refresh ourselves with Thanksgiving to the Lord. Some of the things we're gonna look at today will be how Thanksgiving opens the door to the supernatural and how it positions us for the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. Didn't realize Thanksgiving was so powerful, did you? It keeps us filled with the Holy Spirit, which leads us to the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we can profit, which leads us to the fruit of the Holy Spirit against which there is no law. Thanksgiving does all of that. And this is the week of Thanksgiving. It also is a part of the peace offerings from the Old Testament, which translated in New Testament to the communion service, which is a picture of us and our being able to come into the presence of the living God. So Thanksgiving is powerful. Uh, I liked, I entitled this Thanksgiving, the language of heaven, and that it is the forgotten holiday. How many of you know you go in a store in August and they've got Halloween out? And so the, then Halloween, and it jumps right from Halloween to the commercializing of Christmas. And Thanksgiving gets squished in between and we forget to thank the Lord. And there's a lot of negative things that can happen to us if we forget to thank the Lord. But the, the first scripture I wanted us to look at, and we don't have them on the screen today, but you can just write them down, look them up later. But these are uh, worth meditating on, thinking about. Because, you know, um, really when we take in the Word of God about things, it can actually change our DNA in our, in our bodies. It can actually change our DNA. This is the first thing, I, the first scripture I thought of when I thought about doing Thanksgiving message. And uh, it's Psalm 100. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. And we are the people and the sheep of his pasture. And here's the highlighted verse. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. So you can see the picture on the slide is a picture of the tabernacle of old where God came to tabernacle or dwell amongst his people. And that picture shows the gates and the whole tabernacle is a, is a uh, physical picture of spiritual truths. And it's the, uh, our approaching to God. <clears throat> As we enter into the kingdom, we enter into the systems that, that God's kingdom provides. As we enter in the gates, we do it with thanksgiving in our heart and into his courts with praise. So I like to say that entering in with thanksgiving is the entrance to the supernatural. Because you're entering into God's kingdom through the gates and it says in Psalm 100, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. So thanksgiving is very important. And you know, even Jesus, I'll show you where it, where, where it uh, uh, does the supernatural, where thanksgiving brings forth the supernatural. And that's uh, in, in Matthew 15, in John 6, 11, And I believe it's in Luke. I just didn't write it down. I didn't write that one down, but I, I'm pretty sure it's in all three gospels where he feeds the multitudes. And what did Jesus do? He, he put the people in an order. He, he, he established order. And then he uh, took what he had to work with and he lifted it up to the Lord and thanked him for it. It says, um, he commanded the people to sit down on the ground and he took seven loaves and gave thanks and break them and distribute them to, their, to his disciples. And, and also in John 6, 11, he took the loaves and when he had given thanks... So Jesus, before he moved into that supernatural feeding of the multitudes, he gave thanks. Stop and think about something in your life right now that you need to stop and say, oh, I just need to stop. I need to quit complaining. I need to quit worrying. And I need to start giving thanks to the Lord. This is a week set aside to remind us of these things. So I, I just think that's I'm encouraging myself in the Lord here about thanking the Lord. You know, years ago, um, I felt like I just couldn't, I, I was a, a murmurer. 
and tend to gripe and complain. And I was apologizing to the Lord one day saying, you know, I just can't help it. That's what I inherited. And he said, well, you didn't have to inherit that. You can make a difference. You can change. You can choose not to murmur. And so I learned that day that I had a choice. And even though I had maybe developed the habit of murmuring or complaining or whining, I developed that habit, but I could stop that habit. I can watch my words. I can watch my thoughts. Remember last week we talked about that? And I can, and I can change. So even our Lord, and He shows us the way, the truth and the life, He shows us the way, and even Jesus stopped and thanked the Father. He took what He had to work with. You may just have a little bit of something. You may have a small bit, but He took the few things He had that were available to Him, and He lifted them up and thanked the Lord. And you know, I think as I've thought about this, meditating on these scriptures a little bit, that the woman in the garden... Had she had a grateful, thankful heart, sometimes we can get too familiar with our blessings and then when and we don't stop and thank the Lord, we don't appreciate the value of them. And I think uh, the woman in the garden, I'm wondering if maybe that's why the, the devil was able to tempt her because she didn't have a grateful heart. She didn't thank the Lord. She was too easily drawn to what she didn't have rather than what she did have. And I think as we thank the Lord uh, for all the things, give thanks in all things, it says, that it tends to fill the atmosphere around us and the demonic activity and thought patterns can't get through to us. It's a, it's a place of protection also. And so in Romans 121, it gives us, um, now remember, giving thanks helps us enter, is a gateway, let's put it like that. It's a gateway to uh, the supernatural for us. And in Romans 1, it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. So they, 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 neither were they thankful, even though they knew God. And you know, that could be a, a Christian. You could know God and, and know about him but we slip over into the complaining and murmuring. And this is a week, this is a week like, like I like to treat communion when we're in church. When, we, when it comes time, we take communion here at West Houston uh, once a month. And when it comes to that time for communion, that's a good time for me with the Lord to stop and think, Lord, have I been grateful? Uh, have I been exercising the authority you've invested in me? Have I been um, uh, appreciating all that you've given me? And, and uh, we'll see in a minute about the, sacri- uh, the taking the cup of salvation, to take the cup of salvation. Have I enjoyed my salvation to the degree that you would like for me to, to enjoy it? Uh, communion is a time that, well, this week of Thanksgiving is a time for us to stop and just start thanking the Lord in the midst of whatever's happening in your life. In the midst of all things, start thanking the Lord. Now, in Ephesians 4.17 is another place where you can see the negative effects that not thanking the Lord can have on us. Now, remember, in Romans 1.21, it just said that, we, that they became vain in their imaginations. That's, they became vain in their ability to reason and to make proper judgments. And then further down in that chapter, it says that God turned them over to a reprobate mind a reprobate mind is a mind that has no, is void of judgment, of good judgment. In, in other words, you wouldn't make wise decisions with a reprobate mind. You would make foolish decisions. And then you would suffer the consequences of foolish decisions. So just forgetting to thank the Lord or growing cold in that area can have some devastating effects on us. And so we want to remind ourselves. Amen? Let's just re- let's help each other and remind ourselves. Ephesians 4.17 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not as other as the other Gentiles walk, in the vanity, the emptiness of their own thinking, of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see these, the darkness, blindness of the heart, lack of reasoning and good judgment, 
who being past feeling, it even starts affecting your feelings, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. And that all comes from not thanking the Lord, not having a grateful heart. For not thanking the Lord, your heart begins to harden a little bit. And then that griping and complaining comes in. And then that murmuring comes in. And murmuring, uh, I like what uh, Pastor Jack C. preached a couple of weeks ago. The murmuring is the graveyard of revival. And murmuring is the thief, I'm saying, of the supernatural. So uh, murmuring, uh, the thief of the supernatural, which is brought on by giving thanksgiving. So when we give thanksgiving, it, 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 we enter the gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter the gates of what? We enter the gates of the kingdom of heaven. We enter the gates of God's house. We enter the gates of his presence and his supernatural power. We enter the gates of the supernatural. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24, it says, the, the, he gives you some uh, steps to take. He says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but in the midst of everything, start giving thanks. That's when you... You just start thanking the Lord and you just close your eyes, grit your teeth and thank the Lord because it is a sacrificial act many times. It's not something you feel like doing all the time. It's, it's part of a sacrifice. It's, remember, it's uh, the peace offering of the Old Testament is also a thank offering. And in, if you ever studied the offerings in the Old Testament, they all say something and Jesus fulfilled all of them. But they had an order that, that they went on the fire as a sin offering first. <clears throat> Excuse me. The sin offering. And then there was a burnt offering, which was symbolic of total dedication. And then there was uh, the peace offering went on top of that. And a thank offering would go along with the peace offering. So the peace offering was representative of the presence of God. And of course, the presence of God is supernatural. If you have God's presence, you are in the supernatural. And folks, we need supernatural activity today. This world, Satan's systems are falling apart. And, and we don't have to, uh, to give in to all of that. We, have a, uh, we live in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. God is shaking the earth to get people's attention. But if you're of the kingdom of God, you live out of another system your financials, your finances, your health care, your relationships, your boundaries, they're all different. And that's what you find out when you read the Bible. So in everything we give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. So what did he say? Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace, here's the peace offering. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, spirit, soul, and body, separating you from the profane things of this world and consecrating you unto God. So you can see how rejoicing, listen, uh, gladness of heart, rejoicing evermore, uh, uh, and thanksgiving, these, these are, they all party at the same place. They all hang out together. Like murmuring, griping, bitterness, death, destruction, they all hang out at the same place. Well, gladness of heart, rejoicing evermore, praying without ceasing, giving of thanks. Uh, it all, the, these the, uh, like spirits travel together and they all hang out together. And the very God of peace will sanctify us holy and separate us from the profane things of this world and consecrate us unto himself. Amen. All from this little word, thanksgiving. That's why I call it the language of heaven. And it's the forgotten holiday. It's gotten squashed between Halloween and not just Christmas for what the true meaning of Christmas is, but Christmas in the commercialized state that man has made it today. So Thanksgiving is getting crowded out. You know, when Jesus said, the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, 
and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He showed us how to have that life more abundantly. He showed us how to multiply and be fruitful. He showed us by taking what he had to work with. So just stop and think, what do you have to offer the Lord? What do you have to work with? Lift it up and give thanks for it. Maybe it's just that you have a voice. Maybe it's that you, you know the Lord better than some people do. You might have a small thing uh, that you think is not important. Like he always said in the scriptures, what's in your hand? Whatever's in your hand, give thanks for that. Thank the Lord for that. I'm preaching to myself right here too. So, so in Psalm 116, it says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? <clears throat> I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. That's Psalm 116, 12 and 13. What shall I give to the Lord for all his benefits? You know, the word benefit sometimes can also represent the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what do I render? I will take the cup of salvation. So many times, folks, we go through troubles and we forget to thank the Lord and therefore we don't take from the cup of salvation. His salvation means our health care, our protection, uh, our, the banner over us is love and He protects us and um, our health care and our finances. His salvation is a full package and it covers all all of our life, our whole, it's wholeness, you know. I got hold of that, that thought not too long back. My faith makes me whole. I didn't pray over this part of my body or that part of my body or this or that. I just said, Lord, thank you that my faith makes me whole. And so that's what peace means. Nothing missing, nothing broken, but wholeness. And so as we give thanksgiving and, and this sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit goes to work, we are taking from the cup of salvation. And then he says, uh, David does in Psalm 116, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and I will call upon the name of the Lord. So he wants us, you know, he says in there somewhere uh, in one of the prophets, he says, uh, call upon me in your day of trouble and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that I know that you know not. So sometimes when we don't even know what to do, we can just call upon the name of the Lord. We can take from the cup of salvation. We can start praising God and thanking Him that we know what to do. Amen. Uh, one one day I was in my kitchen, and um, I was trying to decide about something, and I was praying and asking the Lord about it. And I felt like he was saying something to me. And, and my response was, Lord, is that me, you, or the devil? And he says to me, for Pete's sakes, Mary Jean, you are giving more uh, credit. Uh, you, are, you are giving more credit for the devil to speak. Well, how did he say that? You're giving more uh, power to his being able to speak than for me to be able to speak. And so I realized, Lord, you're God and you can speak. And I can, and so I'm going to trust you that you are speaking to me now and start thanking him that I know what to do, that I'm filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and that I walk before him and please him in all respects and, and, and giving thanksgiving for that. Amen. Because that's when the wisdom of God, the supernatural wisdom of God will begin to flow. We just make it too hard. We really make it too hard. And just a simple little thing, and it is the sacrifice. The sacrifice of thanksgiving is a part of the peace offering, and it tells you that in Leviticus chapter 7. In Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, it says, and we saw in the very beginning that this keeps us filled. Thanksgiving keeps us filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, when you stay full of the Spirit, problems dissipate. You just, it's, they go away. I mean, they get crowded out. You know, I don't, I don't think we realize that there's an atmosphere around us. And if it's, if it's quiet and empty, then the devil has a lot of playground there. But if we fill it with praise and thanksgiving, then he can't, get, he can't get past that. He can't get in there. So it's important that we 
keep the flow of the river of life in us coming out and just thanking God in the midst of all things is very important. Remember, it leads us to supernatural intervention. And in today's world, we're going to need the supernatural intervention. So Ephesians 5, 18 through 20, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that keeps us filled with the Spirit. And what does that mean, being filled with the Spirit? Well, if I'm filled with the Spirit, I have access to the gifts of the Spirit. A word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, gifts of healings, workings of miracles, tongues, interpretations, discerning of spirits. When I stay full of the Spirit, those giftings will, will automatically work. They'll just, and sometimes you'll have a word of knowledge and you won't know that's what that is. You'll just know something. Or you'll have a word of wisdom. You, you won't realize that, oh, that is the Holy Ghost coming through me. No, it'll, it'll feel like it's a natural flow and it's who you, it, it's just coming out of you naturally, but it's because you're staying filled with the Spirit. And how do you stay filled with the Spirit? Giving of thanks always. This is a great week to practice these things, don't you think? Let's just, let's just head on into the week thanking the Lord, thanking the Lord that in our country we even have a time set aside for this. Every country, I'm sure, doesn't have a Thanksgiving day. And we're going to lose ours if we're not careful. So we want to hold on to it. And I think if we keep giving thanks for the United States of America and thanking the Lord that he is alive and well in the United States of America, we can crowd out some of the works of darkness. Amen. So Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. So it's not a one-off thing. It's a continual thing. And I, I just encourage all of us this week to uh, let's, let's start developing this pattern in us. Let's start. And if some of you may, may be really good at it already, but you can get better. And some of us might be a little, have let it slip some because we, you know, the Bible says we're like leaking vessels. Our spirit is like a helium balloon. And, you know, you blow up that helium balloon and it flies up to the ceiling. But tomorrow it's going to be on the floor because it leaks. Well, our spirits are like that. That helium balloon is like our spirit. And when we fill up with thanksgiving and praise and reading the word of God and honoring God, when we fill up like that, then all the gifts of the spirit will work. And then the fruit that which it says in the Bible, it says the gifts of the spirit that you will profit with. So it's profitable for us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. But then we get the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. You start operating in love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And the devil can't get to you. He, he, he will just pull his hair and gnash his teeth. Because he can't get in there. You've just warded off. You've just sealed yourself off in the fruit of the Spirit against which there is no law. And so um, staying filled with the Spirit, continually giving thanks to His name. And I wanted to read to you something. This is a friend of mine years back, Lynn Mink, Lynn and Kathy Mink. And Lynn woke up one morning. Now this is called The Giving Revolution. But... Um, I want to call it the Thanksgiving Revolution because giving of thanks. So it is a type, you can, you can tie this into finances or any, any aspect of your life. But let's, let's look at it through the eyes of Thanksgiving today. Amen. And he, he was just saying he woke up one morning and the Lord had spoken to him very clearly. And he said, I want you to begin the giving revolution. And this was for the next year coming up. So let's just say, we're going to begin. This is the, uh, the first day of Thanksgiving week. And we're going to de declare a giving revolution over the week. How about that? A Thanksgiving revolution. 
He said, I want you to begin the giving revolution. Urge my children to begin extravagant, excessive, and radiant thanksgiving. Not just in finances, he says giving, but not just in finances, although they're a part, but giving from every part of their lives. So giving a th- giving of thanks over every part of your lives. Thank you, Lord, that I can see. Thank you, Lord, that I can hear. Thank You know, there's always something. And when darkness starts trying to crowd in on you, you can push it back by giving thanks to the Lord. Just thank you, Lord, that I've got a car. Thank you, Lord, that it had gas in it to get here. Thank you, Lord, that my children, you know, I have nine grandchildren and they are all healthy and even one great grandbaby and they're all healthy. That's something to give thanks about, you know, out of nine children. I think of some people that they spend their lives in a hospital with their children. I have a lot to be grateful for. And even if I didn't have that, I have something. Everybody had something. You know what you always have? If you've received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you always have that great salvation that He purchased on the cross. And you can always go to the Lord and st- and take from the cup of salvation. Even when everything is dark and bad and seems like it's falling apart. And if you'll move into that supernatural place of thanksgiving, then what, what are you doing? You're releasing the angels, you're releasing the power of the Holy Ghost, you're releasing the supernatural power of heaven, you're releasing it all to work things out in your life. Amen. Urge my children to begin extravagant, excessive, and radical giving, not just in finances, although they're a part, but also in every part of their life, from material things to wisdom to time to a smile to a note to a word. My Holy Spirit will lead and quicken quicken them that as they desire to enter the revolution and say, yes, Lord. I'm willing to enter the giving revolution because you know what? The river of life flows. It flows. And, and then when murmuring and attitudes get in the way, it stops the river up. You want the river flowing. You want the anointing in God flowing through you because, um, it, that's when you you read you get into you run out of your abilities and you get into his abilities. Giving from the many things which they possess but never use and don't need, but someone else does, all the way to the sacrifice of giving. And remember, we saw in the scriptures that that thanksgiving can be a sacrifice. I might not want to, I might not feel like it, but I know the power that's behind it, so I'm going to put it to work on this situation. Thanksgiving. Just tell my people to give as never before, to, li- to leave self-focus behind and focus on my leading to give and favor others. Or in this case, thanksgiving to the Lord, to give and favor the Lord, but also others. Because when, pe- when someone opens the door for you or does something for you, thank you is always a powerful thing in response. So don't forget to thank the people around you. This has been my plan from the beginning to meet the needs and desires of my body and shower them with provision. Now is the time for them to step up and enter into a radical giving to enter the giving revolution. In addition, this giving revolution will release them from fear, insecurity, and lack and will activate the long-promised end-time transfer of wealth in the earth from the wicked to the righteous. So I can just see as the church begins to exalt the Lord and, and live in a thanksgiving state of mind, it's just going to drive the devil crazy. The, it will drive and it will suck, suck out the wealth out of his anything that he's stolen. Uh, you know, I, I don't think I finished the thought a minute ago about how Jesus said, uh, the devil's come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He, he, uh, the devil is stealing thanksgiving from our heart. So don't let him do that because he wants to bring in darkness and hardness of heart and all the murmurings and he wants to play in that, in that area. And we're not, uh, we're going to shut him out with the power of thanksgiving. Amen. 
So let's just, you know, one thing I felt impressed to, to pray about uh, as we close out today is um, to, to, it sounds a little strange, but I just felt impressed that, some, that there's some people in our lives that we're thinking, I can't thank God for that. Oh, this is terrible. I just, this is a woe begone me and I have to put up with this. But you know what? I found that a lot of times when you get to the other side of the of, of when you get to the other side and you look back, that was a real gift from God to give you that person in your life, because it caused you to know the Lord better. It caused you to practice your faith better. It caused a lot of positive things in your life. So I pray that you have a great Thanksgiving, that you have a wonderful week. And that we release the power of God, the supernatural power of God through our Thanksgiving this week. And whatever that person is in your life that you think is a, not a gift, let's make a paradigm shift in our attitude and call them a gift and start thanking the Lord for them, for their life, and asking Him to show us how we could pray for their deliverance and healing. Amen. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week.